you guys again. It's nice to talk to you. Now we can talk about everything, finally. <laughs> so, the shootout, Law and Order. What was it like to shoot that scene? They were being smoked out. They weren't really getting an opportunity to surrender. What was that like? The firehouse scene. Yes, yeah. yes. So, I mean, it was all, as always on this show, it was all practical. Um, no special effects, no green screen stuff. It was all like, we have the McSween house and we build a replica McSween house and we run our amazing SFX team runs um, runs what do you call flame it? bars flame bars all the way through the house all above the house all around it um, and they they pump fire through there that's controlled by gas and so like we're in it we're covered in like, flame retardant material and uh, they spray us so we don't go up in flames um, and then we have to act through the flames and the smoke and it is the most visceral real thing. Um, and if, yeah. I think you can feel it on the screen. It feels real and scary. <laughs> yeah, it's extraordinary. And and not only that, it's you have the house burning down, and these guys are surrounded by fire, and you can feel it emanating off the set intensely. And then you've got like sub-zero snow because <laughs> we're shooting in the middle of winter in Calgary, so it's like there's no escape. <laughs> it's freezing. either yeah, freezing it's either you're burning to death or freezing to death. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you've got Jesse and his gang shooting you, at you from the wall. It's, <laughs> right. You know, it's, it's intense. Yeah. Yes, McSween's death during that long order shootout just seemed so cool because they weren't giving them him a chance or anyone a chance to surrender. He has the Bible. It just seems so cool. Why was it like that? <laughs> <laughs> So that's what that world was like right then. It was lawless, it was vicious, life was cheap, you know? I mean, it was really, you know, people were trying to claim territory for themselves. There were giant power struggles going on. And that's, that's you know, McSween did die with the Bible in that's his hand. Historically accurate. You know, yeah, that's how they, I mean. they, yeah, they yeah. shot him dead, you know? I love that character because he's so, he's kind yeah. of, he's got eternal hope. Like, yeah. you, Billy's kind of, He's not hopeless, but he is, he's a realist at this point. You know, mm -hmm. he, he's like teenage kind of wide-eyed hopefulness. More, and he's more. a religious man. Yeah, you know? and Billy is kind of skeptical of religion now because he saw that he couldn't save his mother, he couldn't save his father, couldn't save his little brother, Joe. Yeah. Um, and so when McSween kind of says he's gonna go out with his Bible, it got cut, but there was a line that we threw in which was like, I, I look at him and I say, you crazy bastard. And, <laughs> and then he goes out anyway, it ended up getting cut, but the intention is still there, which is like, Billy looks at him and says, I think you're doomed, but sure, go for it. Like, he's not one to tell a man how to live his life. It is shocking, though, that they that they just blow him away, yeah. and he comes out and, you know, says, I'm surrendering, yeah. you know? Yeah, but yeah. then Billy comes out, and it's just such great choreography, <laughs> how he's able oh. to shoot everyone. Yeah. How is it like to do all that choreography for Billy. Cause he even, like one of my favorite Billy scenes this season is when he is supposedly just calmly asleep and then they wake him up and he's like, oh hi, oh, <laughs> well yeah, what's yeah, that? Yeah. Like, what is it like to kind of do the weapon choreography on the show and also shooting that scene? Yeah, I mean, we're, again, we're so lucky that we get to do it all for real. Um, mm -hmm. We're out in big empty spaces. So, you know, we have a lot of safety protocols in place. Um, we have an amazing props team. Johnny Props and his family are like an amazing like family unit who run our props and they run it like a slick, mm -hmm. slick machine. Um, and they gave us a ton of training how to be safe with the weapons and also how to make it look real. Um, and then we have an amazing stunt team as well, um, led by Brent Walsley, who like choreographs the hell out of it. And, and but I just want to say, in your, on your behalf, you learned in the first season that gunplay with the revolvers, it was extraordinary, right? I, I couldn't yeah. believe it. it was like a circus act. I was like, what? <laughs> when I saw you do that the first time? Yeah, yeah. And then in that scene where he's woken up and he says, you know, they're on to you, they're on, they're coming yeah. into town. I saw you had the gun, you had a cop just right, mm. you had the trigger, the, the hammers back, like you did it, like it everything was exactly where it should be. Yeah, I mean I think since the beginning we just like yeah. always uh, strive to make it as authentic as possible. Yeah. Um, so we do a lot of research on how a lot of how, these, how these guys would, would have their guns prepped. And some of these guys did sleep with a revolver under the pillow because they never knew when they were going to have to get up and run. Um, yeah. So it's like, how do you do that safely and also realistically at the same time? Yeah, that yeah. it's such a small scene, but I'm just like, 
I love Billy's that got it. Like, I love that like, like, don't mess with Billy. Oh no, it's it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. So Billy's relationship with Dosine. Yeah. So her family's dead, as you know, me know. Yeah. Um, and it seems like she has a better understanding of Billy's point of view. But it's not only that she has a better understanding, that she's willing to fight alongside him now. Why is she willing to fight alongside him? And she has she always had this fight on him and, uh, inside of her? And this is why they kind of always had this chemistry? Mm, I think so, yeah. I think Billy's always been able to see in her that she's got like a, a fight and a passion inside her that even if she's suppressing it because of her family environment and the, the way she's been brought up, which is kind of old school Spanish, like colonial kind of like respect and, you know, privilege. Um, and that Billy's kind of like, you gonna get real soon because like war is coming to Lincoln, um, and you've either got to like be ready to fight or like be subjected to it basically. Um, and he knows he's. I don't think he would love her if he didn't know that she had that inside of her. Because okay. I think he's not. He's not interested in being surrounded by people who like, don't who, who don't have it in them to like you know fight for good. Um, and she does, and you get to see that in season two, part two, which is like her her reckoning because of what happens to her family. She gets to like become a hero. Yeah. yeah. Billy's talk with Jesse um, after they signed the peace treaty, which we'll get back to because I was surprised about that, where they're talking about this girl that they both liked, and then it's just like, you don't even really remember her. Why was that conversation important for kind of the next steps in their relationship? Because it felt very important. Yeah, I mean, I think it is. I think it's also a reminder to the audience that these guys have got like a long history together. Mm -hmm. Even though it's only taking place over a few years, it's like uh, at that time a lot happened in a year you know like one year was like a lifetime for these guys yeah. um, and they short. you know they <laughs> someone asked earlier like why don't they shoot each other they they're multiple times they've had each other at the end of the gun and they don't kill each other and i think it's worth reminding the audience that they, they've been they've loved the same woman they loved the, they've loved the same life like they've taught each other things like there is love there between them um, it's really and a respect, yeah. a deep respect and, and affection, and yeah, it's a, it's a very, very intense relationship. Yeah. And also Barbara was a great character, like it's, you know, she's a... I, I loved she's that. She's so good, yeah. Um, the whole episode was It's great. important to like, yeah. for us as an audience to remember what, yeah. what bonds them, I think. Yeah. 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 And it's funny how Riley comes over and she's like, oh, you just made up with Jesse, and he's like, F you, Riley. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There is no love yeah. lost between Billy and Riley. No. <laughs> but, no. well, but why did Billy sign this peace treaty? I was I was surprised. Were you guys surprised? <laughs> yeah, but I think that's what's good about it, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like they got to try everything right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how. I, yeah, Billy does want peace. Like he's not. He's Absolutely. Not angry. He's not like thirsting for war. I think no. it, it, he's willing to fight because that's who he is. But he's not. He doesn't want to fight. Like if he can find a peaceful route to not have the people of Lincoln subjected to, to violence, then he'll take it. He just doesn't believe that it will actually last because he knows these people, and he knows that they don't really want peace. Yes. Yeah. Well, he doesn't really trust them. Yeah. For good reasons. Yeah. But then he goes against it and talks to the governor, which also seems very yeah. unbilly like. Like the end of the season, I'm like, Billy, what are we doing? Well, like, he's <laughs> losing himself a little bit as well because he's lost since losing time. Still, I think he's. He's distrustful. I think he, other than his core group, he's distrustful of, of the powers that are at play. But I think I think there's definitely that aspect, and you also have to remember that there was a corrupt governor that they've just gotten rid of, mm. right? Mm. This old Judge Wilson in town has helped do that up in the upper echelons of government. They brought in this new guy, and he's kind of you know one great thing about Billy is he's. He's cynical to a point, but he's always willing, and he thinks, okay, maybe this guy actually is a decent man and mm -hmm. cares about what's, what's right and what's wrong and not just about power structure and politics. Yeah. He's not cynical, actually. No, think really, like, he's not. No, he's, he's wary. He's wary, but, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Not I, think, I think like, he's, that's a good point. He, yeah. he sees the good in people until, yeah. until they lose his trust. Right. And I think he's willing to like bet on someone who's set, who, who he takes them for their word, which is he comes in and says I'm gonna clean things up and he goes, Okay, cool, let's see it. And then when he you know, when someone doesn't, then he turns against them. Yes. yes. Personally, which death has gotten you the most so far in these two seasons? Ooh, ooh which death? That's hard. Yeah. I mean season one when we lost Billy's mom. Oh god, so. that killed me. That was that was a hard one. Yeah, I mean, that was um, But I, I always 
Yeah, yeah, all of them. But yeah. yeah, I mean, for me, it's always like with such a tight cast, like yeah. really, really close, like really, really, really good vibes on set and off set. Yeah. And I think anytime we lose someone, it's really sad. Like you know, this season we lose Beckwith and uh, McSween and spoiler. Alert. Uh, but yeah, we we lose some like really yeah. cool characters who are even the supporting cast is so rich and like full of great actors. So it's it's a shame to see people go. But it also furthers the story and it's exciting. So yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me about this again. I can't wait to thank talk to you, you about future projects again yeah. as well. Great. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.